Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my updated patron, Gort. Thank you for continuing to support the channel. Friday turned out to be a newsletter day. And to those of you that have not yet joined the list, what are you doing? It's free. I'm not going to send you any spam. It's the same news you would get here on the channel, just in a more bite-sized package. And I will periodically mention this. God forbid my channel ever gets taken down or censored for whatever reason. You never know nowadays. I would like an avenue to let everybody know how I plan to continue to deliver the electrified videos if this channel is taken down. Honestly, at this point, I have no plans to monetize this, so I really just want to keep providing value and, of course, have a more reliable way that I have a bit more control over to get in touch with everybody again if something were to happen to this YouTube channel. It's electrifiednews.com. If you didn't know, today, September 9th, is World EV Day. So for those that celebrate, enjoy. There's actually a lot of ground to cover today, so get ready, we're gonna be moving. On X replying to Whole Mars, Elon said that we're opening a lot more superchargers in response to Whole Mars saying we need more. Elon asked what regions Tesla was missing and a bunch of people provided great input. When it comes to more pull through sites at supercharger locations, the Cybertruck program manager said it's already in work, including showing these on the UI. Not only will you be able to see how many stalls will be available when you arrive, but you'll soon be able to know how many have a pull through stall. We've already known Tesla has plans to spend around $500 million expanding the supercharger network this year, but right now with the public sentiment, we need this message to spread far and wide. Panasonic has finalized preparations at the revamped factory for 4680 production that will largely be for Tesla. And who doesn't love a generalized battery promise? They're saying these cells will have five times the capacity of 2170s. Panasonic intends to kick off production after getting the green light from clients at the factory in Japan. It's even more exciting because we have to remember Panasonic has a factory opening in Kansas set to begin production of 4680 cells next year. At the plant in Japan, Panasonic will initially be aiming for an annual capacity of several gigawatt hours, and at that site, they'll be trying out processes that it could implement at other battery factories around the world. Obviously, more 4680 supply makes it even less likely that the Cybertruck hits a production bottleneck that's directly because of 4680 production. But for whatever it may be worth, I'm also with Jordan at the limiting factor in that we think there's no reason to switch every Tesla vehicle to 4680s as soon as possible. The main reason? Tesla has the best global EV supply chain of any company on the planet, and I don't think it's particularly close. You can argue BYD if you want, I guess, but we have to remember a majority of their EV sales are still in the Chinese market, they're only now just beginning to trickle into Europe and North America. As promised, Vision Auto Park for Cybertruck has begun rolling out to customers with software 2024.32.5. There are some early videos out there like this one from Holmar showing the Cybertruck parking itself. I think most of us are largely aware of this feature, it's just now the Cybertruck can do it too. But Elon did add we should change that so the yoke is stationary as it's not mechanically coupled to the wheels, same goes for when it's on autopilot. It's fair to wonder how disengagements would play out if the squircle were to just stay in place. As always though, just because Elon said Tesla should do something doesn't guarantee that they will. And in case you missed it, Tesla also released a new hands-free frunk feature, but it's only for select models. Those being vehicles with ultra wideband support, which is the new Model S and X and the 2024 Model 3. Chris from Dirty Tesla showed a quick video of this in action. All right, here's your first look at the auto frunk. So you have to have an iPhone 11 or newer. Hopefully it'll come to Android later. But you just stand here. I heard three beeps and it opens automatically. So it just basically detected I was standing there waiting for it to open. The hands are full, put the stuff in, and then you can close it. So that works pretty nice. As Wes highlighted, UWB helps your vehicle pinpoint your phone with much better accuracy. Fun fact, currently around 45% of the time, the frunk is opened using the exterior button, this on the Cybertruck. 
Wes did say UWB is currently working only on iPhone. And a pro tip from Wes, he said you can also close the frunk with the emergency release button, which is right down here on the right side of the frunk when you're looking from the front. Android users, you'll have to be patient, but Tesla is now also offering the option to exclude home when using these hands-free features. If you're out in your garage at home, maybe standing by a tool bench doing something, it will not automatically open your frunk or your trunk with that option disabled. The Wall Street Journal had a report talking about a potential licensing deal between Tesla and XAI. Elon said he did not read the article, but the above is not accurate. Tesla has learned a lot from discussions with engineers at XAI that have helped accelerate achieving unsupervised FSD, but there's no need to license anything from XAI. The XAI models are gigantic, containing in compressed form most of human knowledge and couldn't possibly run on the Tesla vehicle inference computer, nor would we want them to. The Tesla AI models have incredible incredibly dense in a good way intelligence as they compress video of reality into driving commands, but must operate on a 300 watt computer with memory size and bandwidth far lower than say an H100 GPU. Tesla real world AI also has a vastly larger context size than an LLM as the combined video history from all cameras is several gigabytes in size. Elon said, how many fake articles have you seen about Tesla at this point? A hundred, a thousand, maybe several thousand? Wall Street Journal is talking nonsense. And remember, just because today there's no need for Tesla to license anything from XAI does not mean there won't ever be in the future. S&P Global actually put out a positive article talking about autonomous progress so far this year in the United States. However, they largely touted progress at Waymo, which definitely deserves some credit, and they said Cruz, despite suffering some setbacks, that may only propel them to be a better company going forward. Some updated data, Waymo has nearly 800 vehicles in operation and is the only company actually charging fares for autonomous rides. Their Gen 6 system features a more cost-effective sensor setup with better resolution, range, and compute power. It's a modular system that allows for swapping out of sensing components to adapt to specific environments. Gen 6 is designed to operate reliably in a wider range of inclement weather conditions like heat, fog, rain, and hail. When it comes to crews, we know earlier this year they canceled or delayed their origin shuttle project but they're still talking about a level four system on personal transportation, both in the context of Cruise and on a Cadillac concept car. And Tesla might need to delay its 1010 event yet again because GM is planning their investor day for October of this year. As the leader in the EV revolution, I think GM may steal the show. And I won't read it to you, but their update on Tesla was very short, not nearly as in depth, and overall didn't have a positive tone. Now look, this wasn't an overly technical article to begin with, but they did highlight some of the things that Waymo was doing with the removal of sensors and cost reductions, but they didn't highlight any of that for Tesla. They didn't even talk about the vision only system, nothing about the end to end network. Again, that's probably not their specialty and that's understandable, but it's pieces like this from companies like like S&P that have so many people still thinking that Waymo is ahead of Tesla. But as I always say, they are just playing different games. We got the official numbers for Tesla China for both domestic and export for the month of August. Looking at the year over year figure for domestic sales, Tesla China is down 0.6%. And looking at the export number year over year, Tesla China January through August is down 15%. If you want a quick dopamine hit that says this was the best month for Tesla China domestically all year, that is indeed accurate. However, I think zooming out and paying attention to the year to date numbers paint a more accurate picture. There was some news on X that was touting the foolish figure of EV market share and how it was declining for Tesla in China, trying to paint a bleak picture of Tesla's prospects in China, thanks in part to having a stale lineup. Elon responded to that saying, believing the news is silly. Our Shanghai factory is running at max capacity. A quick fact check on Elon, Tesla's Q2 slide deck had their Shanghai capacity at over 950,000 per year. In the first half of this year, Giga Shanghai has produced, we'll call it 415,000 vehicles. 
If Tesla had the same production rate for the second half of the year, that would lead to around 830,000 vehicles produced. But if you added an extra 15 to 20% for the second half, that would actually bump the total to closer to 900,000. I know a 15 to 20% boost may be high, but typically the second half of the year is busier than the first half. That guarantees nothing, but if we use that 900,000 vehicles produced figure and divide it by the stated capacity, that would mean Giga Shanghai operating around 94.7% of capacity in this hypothetical projection for the end of this year. Plus, given downtime and repairs and unexpected supply chain hiccups, usually factories operating between 80, 90, 95% of stated capacity could be classified as operating at full capacity. In part, it's due to a semantics game and just depends on how true you want to be to the actual term. I I gotta be honest, the past few weeks after having the illness, I just haven't felt like myself. So I just wanna say, in as much as it's up to you, please take care of your body and don't take overall health and wellness for granted. And that message is part of why I'm still happy to talk about AG1, the sponsor of this video, years after first trying it out to support my guy Lex Friedman and also Sahil Bloom. AG1, greens powder. I'm taking this basically every single day since 2011. Just know there's a ton of disinformation about AG1 out there, largely because it's become so popular, similar to Tesla FUD actually. Full transparency, I get paid $0 for AG1 commission from any sales, so that's a lie that's being spread. There's also people with competing products that are saying they know how much AG1's ingredients actually cost. But there are indeed some proprietary blends in AG1, which means unless this person has insider information, they don't actually know that answer. But more important than that, however you decide to get your daily baseline of nutrition, just make sure you're getting the highest quality of ingredients. From all of my research, AG1 really was the company that seemed to go above and beyond when it comes to supply chain sourcing. There's 75 vitamins, minerals, and probiotics in every serving. I enjoy the taste, I know that's subjective. It's great at home and on the go, and it's certified by NSF. With Andrew Huberman and Peter Atia as part of the AG1 company, personally, I actually trust that they are pursuing a science-backed approach. If you'd like to try it out, you can get five travel packs in a one-year supply of vitamin D3, K2 for free at drinkag1.com electrify the links below or using the QR code on the screen. This Eaton company, which is an intelligent power management company, has announced a new collaboration with Tesla. It's designed to boost the functionality and adoption of home energy storage and solar installations in North America. Targeting early 2025, Tesla's Powerwall would support Eaton's new Able Edge smart breakers and make it easier and faster for installers and homeowners to achieve intelligent load management functionality, which should help extend the backup duration during a grid outage. Eaton said they're planning on bringing this solution to the mainstream market. We'll fact check that soon. The solution will help reduce complexity by enabling homeowners and installers to use Tesla's app to install, commission, and control both technologies. This partnership could also be a sign of things to come for the future as Eaton also makes products for data centers, utility, industrial, commercial, residential, and aerospace markets. But here's the thing. Eaton is not a small company. Last year, they did over $23 billion in revenue and they have customers in more than 160 countries. Simply put, this partnership should make it much easier for customers to install both solar and battery storage. Plus, it should make those systems even more efficient. We got a new Tesla stock note from Morgan Stanley. A recent investor survey said the AI theme is more deterministic to Tesla's share price than electric vehicles by roughly two to one. I don't think we should be surprised if we see Tesla begin trading a bit more in line with some of the main AI names. They said the value of Elon's non-Tesla stakes may be reaching parity or exceeding the value of his Tesla shares. We urge Tesla investors to expand their analysis 
analysis of the company's operational and strategic outlook to include scenarios that may potentially involve Elon's other interests outside the company. Which is just another way of saying what we've been saying for a long time and that Tesla is absolutely going to benefit from advancements at companies like XAI and SpaceX. Mobileye has chosen to end the internal development of LiDARs for use in autonomous and highly automated systems. We now believe the availability of next-gen LiDAR is less essential to our roadmap for eyes off systems. This decision was based on a variety of factors, including substantial progress on their IQ6 based computer vision perception, increased clarity on the performance of their internally developed imaging radar, and continued better than expected cost reductions in third party LiDAR units. The move has no bearing on Mobileye's commitment to develop their in house imaging radar, which is meeting performance specs based on samples and is expected to enter production next year. The LiDAR R&D unit will be wound down by the end of this year, affecting about 100 employees. On X last year, I called this Elon's bet of the decade and listed all of the companies that at the time were relying on LiDAR. LiDAR is, is a fool's errand, and, any, and anyone relying on LiDAR is doomed. Responding to Sawyer sharing the same video, Elon said, and fuel cells and hydrogen combustion cars make LiDAR look smart. If you wanted to classify this as a company maybe waking up to the fact that LiDAR is a fool's errand, I can understand why you would. However, to be fair, there's at least a chance that Mobileye will continue using LiDAR heavily, just more reliant on third parties because maybe the costs are actually coming down. But this absolutely could transition into a more vision only approach from Mobileye. There's this site Car Finder Zone, which basically aggregates many of the used Teslas for sale into one platform, allowing you to search across multiple platforms in a pretty easy to use tool. They have listings from Hertz and others all across the country. But reading their website, they said, we track dealers to offer shoppers a consolidated search experience. And one of the key metrics we follow is how often prices are adjusted in response to market changes. Tesla stands out as the most active dealer in our sample. In August this year, Tesla's used inventory prices were adjusted an average of seven times per listing. Compare that to Carvana and CarMax, which only made two price changes per listing in the same period. Tesla's dynamic pricing shows they're always fine tuning to stay competitive. It's pretty clear Tesla is using some sort of algorithm to adjust their pricing. The price changes tend to be small but frequent with daily nudges being common. This flexibility allows Tesla to react quickly to market shifts whether demand is cooling down or heating up. This is what I mean by the Tesla algorithm that most people won't be talking about. It does a great job of tying back into the theme of Tesla using its real-time data and its own warp drive enterprise software system to make things so smooth and quick when it comes to Tesla's operations. It's all of the same Seemingly little things like this that Tesla has built up over years that allows them to be so agile and flexible in the face of all of this uncertainty and really better served to handle that uncertainty than anybody else. Lucid announced a pretty large software update of their own, they're calling it UX 2.4, which is largely focused on new advanced driver assist features. Dream Drive Pro will now have lane change assist, 3D lane visualizations, and curve control. There will be a new Lucid voice assistant and more than a dozen other updates, enhancements, and fine tuning. You'll see the driver initiated lane change assist certainly mimics some Tesla features. And the new 3D lane visualization also looks very familiar. To that point, Duvall, who works on autopilot and AI at Tesla said, kind of amazing how Tesla pioneered this UI for autonomy in customer cars and everyone else's is just a different theme of it. I also always love highlighting all of the Tesla ripple effects I call them that are currently going through all of the industry. Tesla is shaping the auto industry way more than the average consumer gives them credit for. I'll have this link below if you're interested in the rest of the features. Now we just have to see it out in the real world. This company, EY, put out a new press release saying in the US, consumers are now less likely to buy an EV this year compared to last year. Of the US consumers planning on buying a new vehicle in the next two years, only 34% intend to buy an EV, down from 
48% in the survey last year. Despite a focus on infrastructure and EV education, consumers cite expensive battery replacement and concerns about public chargers as major deterrents to buying an EV. This is a global survey of about 20,000 consumers from 28 countries. They said, while we've seen substantial increases in interest in purchasing of EVs since 2020, this year's survey shows dips in the demand for the first time. In this case, when I say EY, it's referring to one of the member firms of Ernst & Young Global. However, important context you have to keep reading to find, they did say the US specific findings account for 1,500 respondents. Thus, most of the 20,000 respondents are not actually from the US. So this data being heavily weighted toward responses across Europe has this data making a lot more sense. A fun one for Australia, there's been a new all-time maximum instantaneous national electricity market renewable energy share of 73% that was recorded today. The share of renewables continues to take over and the share of coal continues to diminish. They said the figure could potentially hit 75% in the next few months. Australia's main grid is making some great progress using solar, wind, and battery storage. The website Car Sales just dropped its best electric cars of 2024. They gave the best family EV to Tesla's Model Y, specifically the rear wheel drive. On X, Alex shared a picture of the new Model 3 just for Mexico with the leather and fabric interior combo. Over the weekend, SETI Park highlighted four different Tesla patents that all have to do with Tesla's upcoming, we think, wireless charging technology. As always, with these, just because we have patents does not guarantee we ever see these things in production. However, when there's multiple, usually that's a good indication that a decent amount of time and manpower is being allocated to solving that problem. Plus, in this case with Tesla and Wyferion and leaks in past shareholder decks, this all makes a ton of sense. I'm confident there's enough evidence out there that Tesla is indeed working on wireless charging and we're most likely going to hear a lot more on 1010. This is not news, but I really enjoyed looking at it. This Reddit user shared two images saying country EV life. Oh, the places you can go. In a new joint study between Here Technologies and SBD Automotive, they're saying nearly every state fails to meet the optimal ratio of chargers to EVs. Specifically, 47 states fall short of their target ratios. Only the District of Columbia and three states, Vermont, Massachusetts, and Rhode Island have the prime ratio. They said the ideal ratio of registered EVs to public level two and fast chargers across the US is nine or 10 EVs per charging plug. But each state has its own target ratio based on road networks, population, rate of EV adoption, and the current fleet of EVs. This brings up the chicken and egg problem that I think many companies are having. Do you build out the chargers now and hope that people will come and your utility rates will be good enough to maintain a legitimate business? Or do you wait for more companies to sell more EVs and then work on building out the chargers? It's obviously a problem if you build too many chargers and you don't have enough people utilizing them, you can easily overshoot your ideal ratio. A principal at SBD said, we are a bit concerned in some European countries that they've already overshot and it's become too difficult as a business to be a charge point operator. In the US, we don't have that problem yet, but it could become a problem in the future. I think we'd all agree there are plenty of factors that would impact the optimal ratio of chargers to EVs, but at least from this report, most states do need more. RBB24 has reported that Giga Berlin is actually paying for yet another form of transportation for employees. They can now ride a bus that Tesla has established a new route for specifically to Giga Berlin. It runs six times each day. So far, I haven't been able to officially confirm if it's electric. NHTSA just proposed some new safety standards to better protect pedestrians. The standard would establish test procedures simulating a head to hood impact and performance requirements to minimize the risk of head injury. NHTSA estimates the new standard would save 67 lives a year. NHTSA will be accepting public comment for 60 days. I've seen a few different anecdotes out there of people saying that the performance of actually Smart Summon on Hardware 4 and Hardware 3 is largely the same. 
There may be minor differences, but they really should be mostly unnoticeable. Swedish battery maker Northvolt is now working to halt a financial tailspin, pausing some production at its flagship factory and cutting jobs. They're also considering seeking new partners. They said we're having to take some tough actions for the purpose of securing the foundations of Northvolt's operations. This company already pushed back plans for an IPO to next year. This is the company that BMW backed out of a roughly $2 billion deal with. And fun fact, Northvolt was founded by two ex-Tesla employees and VW is a roughly 21% owner in the company. Tesla stock closed the day at $216.27, up 2.63%, while the NASDAQ was up 1.16%. It was an average volume day, trading about 11 million shares below the average volume the past 30 days. In case you need a perspective shift, I wanted to share this. Holmar said, why is everyone so mad all the time? We're living through very exciting times, to which Elon said the most exciting times ever. I'll admit I struggle with this because I do believe we're called to care for and to serve our neighbors, to love them, and to provide for those that are in need. I also think it's important to be educated on what's going on in the world so we can know how to vote, how to pray, and all of those things. But we really are shaped and molded by the things that we spend the most time thinking about. So I just wanted to say, if you're in a place where you're focused on the negative too much, do what you can to better control what goes in your ears and your eyes. You may need to look a little bit harder in 2024 to find all of the incredibly exciting things and the good that is still out there in the world, but it's out there if you look. Don't forget, check out AG1 links below if you're interested. If you do, as always, thank you in advance. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Please like the video if you did. You can find me on X, linked below. And a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.